So last but not least, let's wrap up with a few things to remember. Well, first of all, I think it's important to, to get the difference between the classical models, the supported models and the stable models of a logic program. Now, the classical models of a logic program can simply be obtained by interpreting the rules in the logic program by implications and let's say the comma by a conjunction, right? And then you take the models, the classical models of the set of implications and there you go. The supported models, well, we actually um, characterize them through completion formulas, but in fact their salient property is that every atom that is true in a supported model is also supported by a rule whose body is also true in this model. So in a way there is a notion of support, but not strong enough actually to rule out uh, infinite derivation. So supported models do not guarantee that each atom has a finite derivation. And this is actually guaranteed by the stable models of a logic program, which we've already characterized, for instance, with the reduct based definition. Okay, then actually we tried actually to characterize uh, these, uh, these models here. And as mentioned, uh, the completion formulas characterize the supported models, or more or less the models of the completion of a formula are called the supported models. And similarly, the stable models are the models of the completion and the loop formula. And the cavette you've just seen on the on the last last pre, or the last or the previous slide actually that we can still refine a bit the definition of a loop and also allow uh, some more trivially trivial strong strongly connected components and this would actually add loops to the to, to the setting that are singleton for and we will get a singleton loop for each atom. And this would actually account for the necessary completion formulas and hence we can also characterize the stable models simply in terms of loop formulas. Now the reason why this is not often done is because the loop formulas are actually the source of an exponential blow up. And having things pulled apart and saying here's the, here, here are the completion formulas and there are only polynomially many, many ones or linearly many ones in terms of atoms and rules. This is more or less the polynomial part, while the exponential part is where there is an exponential number of non-trivial loops, and then we have to handle them with care, is actually very important, and that's why they are often uh, kept apart conceptually. As such, as we just more or less saw, right, the concept of external support and loop formulas is quite powerful, well, as we've seen actually that they also allow us to capture the necessary completion formulas, for instance. So anyway, uh, even though there are just a few buzzwords, there are, is quite some intrin intrinsic stuff going on and we will actually keep working with a lot of these concepts when we now go on by looking at operators and later actually when even when we look at algorithms and data structures in the actual ASP solver. Okay, so bear with me and uh, see you for the next part. Bye.